So over the years, I've traveled the United States to a lot of places that are pretty remote. And I've had the chance to get some pretty epic footage of places that are just beautiful. But I'll tell you what, for as beautiful as they are on the ground, when you look at things from the sky, it's an entirely different animal. And the location I'm going to show you in this video is one of those to the extreme. When you're looking at it on the ground, it's a very curious thing. But when you look at it from the sky, it's utterly epic. And the story that goes along with what this is and how it plays into America and world history is amazing. And I'm going to try to show you all that in this video. Plus, Thelma and Louise. Yeah. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, you're going to want to sit back, you're going to want to relax, and you're going to want to check this out. <laughs> Before we jump into this, I want to remind you to hit that subscribe button and also hit that notification bell so you are notified of all new videos. Here we go. In the past 10 years, I've been all over the deserts of the Western United States and they all have something in common. There isn't very much color. There's a lot of sand, scrub brush, snakes, scorpions, slick rock, things of that nature but not very colorful. They all look the same. They have their own charm as they stand, but they're still not very colorful. And there's one exception to that, and that's a spot directly in the center of Moab, Utah. And even when people see it, they don't even know what it is they're looking at. And I was one of them. And what I'm talking about is this right here. Well, here, let me give you a better angle. Because looking at it this way, you still can't tell what it is. And I, again, was one of those people. So let's jump over to Google Earth real quick and head down into Moab. To Potash Road, specifically. And to be even more specific, let's jump over right here and take a look at this. Now this is crazy. It brings the Nazca Lines to mind. Except... Potash Road is a little less spiritual and a little more industrial, but still, you get what I'm saying. Now to get here, you have to drive parallel to the Colorado River, and it's a beautiful ride. It's an amazing ride. It's more color than you're going to see in most of Moab due to the river being right there. And also, you're going to drive down a road that's known as Wall Street. And it's known as Wall Street because you will see world-class rock climbers risking their lives climbing up these straight cliff walls which is absolutely insane but they do it and another notable feature of this wall street road is the petroglyphs that this entire span of rock is covered with there's petroglyphs absolutely everywhere and if you keep an eye out they mark them on the street so you can see where they're at but i mean it's amazing it is absolutely amazing because I love petroglyphs because somebody carved a story in stone, literally. And once you get past all that, the hut top transitions into a dirt road that brings you into or continues to bring you on Potash Road. And this is the road. And there's not too much going on until you roll up to this on your left hand side. It doesn't really look like very much until you noticed all the no trespassing signs and private road signs. That's your first hint that somebody is making money in the desert and you shouldn't come in. 
but the road brings you right by this fence, which brings you right by the potash fields or pools. And these things are massive. You can't really appreciate what they are from this particular angle. But these pools are extremely important to the United States and the world, but specifically the United States, to the point where the patent for the potash was signed by President G.W. himself. Are we rolling tape on that? No, not that GW. George Washington actually signed the first patent ever issued in the United States of America, number one, and it was for potash. That's how important this stuff is. And the story behind it is pretty crazy, so check this out. Potash or potassium is important because it can be used in fireworks, it could be used in gunpowder which you know we use plenty of. It can be used in hand soap. They could use it for making glass of all types, and they could also use it as a fertilizer. But the only problem with this is you had to burn massive amounts of wood in order to get potash, because potash is made like this. Hello, today I will be teaching you how to make potash the traditional way. Pause the video now to see what parts you need. Start a fire. Hardwood is used because it burns hotter. Scoop some ash into a sieve and shake it to get the fine stuff at the bottom. Now add water and mix. So now you take this water and you pour it through a filter. Now take your pot and put it on the stove and set it to max. So now at the bottom of your pot you should have potash. You can scrape it off and do it again to get more. Thanks for watching. Now imagine how much wood you would have to burn just to make a fireworks display like this or to power all the guns of the world. You'd have to make an awful lot of fires. Just to give you an idea how important potash was back at the beginning of this country, the United States, in the, in the country, in the state that I'm from, Massachusetts, there were over 250 potash factories alone. It was a big deal, a very big deal, as you can see. And these guys were burning massive amounts of wood in order to get this potash. With the importance of potash in so many industrial applications, if it kept going the way it was going, we wouldn't have any more forests left. Imagine for just 250 factories alone in Massachusetts, they would literally burn up all the forests of North America. And not only that, imagine the amount of smoke in the atmosphere. But fortunately, in 1861, German scientists figured out a new way to extract potash, and it involved this. Underground mining, which was incredibly hardcore and tedious, to extract the potassium chloride in its natural form, which was a rock. But we didn't worry about that because Germany had it covered. They basically monopolized the entire thing. And they also found other uses for it, such as fertilizer to make crops grow better. So this was really a problem for the United States because in 1910, just four years before World War I started, Germany shut us off. We were on our own. We had to make our own potash all over again. So. In 1911, U.S. government officials start searching everywhere, places like Searles Lake in California, Carlsbad, New Mexico, places that were pretty much desolate other than the fact that under the ground there was a high amount of potassium and it needed to be extracted, but they didn't want to mine it. And that's where these guys come in. So in order for the company called Intrepid Potash Incorporated to extract potash or potassium chloride from the desert of Utah, they use a series of evaporation pools. They operate three potash mines in the United States, one in New Mexico and two in Utah, but the most famous one is the one I'm showing you right now. At the mine, miners pump water from the Colorado River deep underground to reach the potash ore which lies at about 3,900 feet or 1,200 meters below the surface. The water dissolves the soluble potash into a brine, which is then pumped into underground caverns. Once it is fully dissolved, the potash brine is pumped to one of the evaporation ponds, and this is when things get trippy. The water in the evaporation pond is dyed bright blue to help absorb more sunlight and heat. This reduces the time it takes for the potash to crystallize at which point it can be removed and processed for use as fertilizer. 
The evaporation process at the Moab mines takes about 300 days, and the miners produce between 700 and 1,000 tons of potash per day. As the evaporation process takes place, the ponds change color. At times, most of the ponds are a vibrant electric blue. Sometimes, however, the ponds display a range of colors, creating a rainbow of blues alongside stripes of turquoise, orange, yellow, and white, indicating different stages of evaporation. And that is how they get it done. That's what these mines are for. Because the entire place is fenced off all the way around the perimeter, I mean, you can get incredibly close, but you just can't go over and walk on it. It has the appearance of ice. It looks just like ice or Italian ice, even better. And it's amazing to look at this in the middle of the desert. You can go up onto a cliff face, or you can go up on a very tall peaks, or you can use a drone, which is what I'm doing right here. It's amazing because everything else around here, as you can see by the ground, is basically lifeless. This is the lifeblood of this community for the most part. And once again, they're drawing all their energy off the Colorado River that you can see right up there in the upper right hand corner as it flows right by. And also something else that's kind of funny about this area is this is what happened right here as well. This is where they filmed the jump in Thelma and Louise. Brad Pitt's first foray into acting, I believe. That could be wrong. But this is exactly where they filmed Thelma and Louise. They never actually show the ladies landing down here on the rocks, but it's just a funny little thing. Okay, so in 1807, Humphrey Davy discovered potassium. pot ash -eum. Potassium, get it? And you can find potassium in pretty much anything. It's, it's, it's not uncommon. Bananas, all sorts of things. Gatorade. But potassium hydrochloride in its purest forms is highly reactive. Now this is pure elemental potassium hydrochloride. Now if you take a little bit of bat guano or bat shit and add it to the mix, that's how you end up with gunpowder and the powder you need for fireworks, etc. Crazy, but true. So I've had this footage for about two or three years, maybe a year, it's hard to tell. It's all a blur at this point in life. But my father suggested that I should make this video. And anything my father asked me to make a video on, I'm gonna make a video on. So this video, I'm making. It's amazing when you're here because again, other than the Colorado River, which is running green or brown most of the time, and it's way down the cliff face, there isn't much going on out here that you don't see pretty much everywhere else in Moab. Lots of red dirt, lots of slick rock, lots of lizards, snakes, jeeps, etc. But to see something like this for yourself, firsthand, up close, personal, something that can allegedly be seen from outer space, it's kind of a once in a lifetime thing. And seeing how there's only three of these in the United States and this is the largest and most colorful of all of them, I was happy to get it on video and to show it to you guys. So I really hope you enjoyed it. It's a crazy thing to think about this and the history goes back to the beginning of the United States. The very first patent ever put into law or whatever it's called and signed by George Washington him himself. That's pretty crazy at any rate. If you enjoyed this video make sure you hit that like share and subscribe leave a comment below and i will try to return the favor i am out